Hi everybody, um, I am Jeremy Maddox and I'm the prospective parliamentary candidate for Chelsea and Fulham for the Brexit party. Um, this morning, myself and some colleagues from the party, we were doing some campaigning at Parsons Green Underground Station and talking to people in the constituency and commuters and a lot of questions are being raised at the moment because people want to know what is the Johnson agreement that's being put forward. Well, the first thing is it's not an agreement, it's a treaty which will be we will be bound to in law. Um, and it's something which myself and many others have huge objections to for many, many reasons. Um, and I just wanted, because people are asking me about this, and I thought it'd be good to put things down in a, in a video, uh, just so that people could understand the key reasons and the key problems with this treaty that's being put forward. So what uh, Johnson has done is he's taken the uh, detested withdrawal agreement that uh, failed Parliament several times and he's got rid of the backstop. Well, that was the worst agreement that could have been put forward, um, pretty much the worst agreement that anybody has ever put forward in peacetime for this country. And he's got rid of one of the really bad aspects of it, but everything else seems to be left intact pretty much. Um, so he, he's taken away the backstop, which would it, have bound us in perpetuity, guaranteed into the European Union. But as I will explain, it's not completely um, good news. Um, so what we have now is the second worst deal that has ever been negotiated uh, in living history for, the, for this country. So I think I'll, I'll divide it up into three areas. So first one is the never ending purgatory, which I believe we're going to be bound into. Uh, secondly, are the financial costs. And third is the regulation and alignment that we're going to be forced into. So firstly, let's take the, the never ending purgatory where we are bound into a two year extension with the possibility of a further one year extension on top of that as part of what has been negotiated. But how, how do we actually know that we're going to get out after those three years? I think there's no guarantee at all. As we've seen, we were expecting to leave the European Union by now. Um, once we had delivered our notice, we were expecting to come out after two years and hey presto, three years and a bit later, we're still in and we're still arguing. So we're going to be locked into this transition phase, as they call it, and that is going to go on for three plus years and we could be in it forever because you know what's going to happen after three years uh, when we continue to be aligned and having to take all the rules and regulations from the European Union. The Remainers are going to say, well, hang on a minute, we can't fall off a cliff edge, we can't um, go into a no deal, we haven't got a deal with the European Union, so we're going to have to stay in the transition phase. How many years? Four, five, six, seven? This goes on and on. The pain continues, the uncertainty continues. We're also locked into a new kind of commission, um, and we have to accept all of the European Court of Justice decisions and we are excluded from the international courts. And this is after, this is after we've actually transitioned, um, that we are not actually able to uh, go to arbitration or to other international courts. And this so new commission that's set up is going to be bound by the European Court of Justice. Um, so whilst we're in this transition phase, we're also, of course, in the single market, the customs union, we have to take all of the regulations and we carry on with everything pretty much as before. But the only difference being we have absolutely no say over any of the laws that are being passed by the European Union. So we're effectively in the European Union. We have to abide by everything, but the European Union will be changing and adding and making new laws. And we also have to abide by those. And you can guarantee those laws are not going to be favorable to the United Kingdom. They will be made for the other 27 European states. So for those of you who think this is a deal, a clean break deal that gets us out, think again. It is not. It is a way that keeps us locked in for as long as who knows. So that's the never ending purgatory. The second problem I have with this uh, treaty 
are the financial costs. We're still obliged to pay 39 billion pounds towards the European Union. Uh, for what? If somebody could tell me what we're getting for 39 billion um, and something which is worth 39 billion, uh, then I would think again. But I cannot identify anything um, at all. We, we don't even have a free trade agreement. We're just locked into taking somebody else's rules uh, during the next however many years. Um, we also, in addition to that, we have unlimited further fines that we could be obliged to pay. Um, we have contingent liabilities and billions of pounds potentially in certain things like, for example, in the city of London, the EU is claiming that we owe VAT on derivatives. This runs into billions. They've kept quiet about it for now. As soon as we have left and we've got this treaty in place, you can guarantee they're going to come hammering on the door and they'll, be want, to be, they'll want to be paid because they know that legally they'll be entitled to it and they will probably get it. Um, and the EU is able to make whatever rules it wants to punish the city. As we all know, the European Union have wanted to take business away from the city of London to Paris and Frankfurt and other capitals. Now they're going to be in a position for the next three plus years to put in place regulations without any oversight from the United Kingdom. Well, we get one observer, um, but we certainly have no say over it. Um, so no effective oversight and they can put in rules in place in order to hammer the city of London. Um, you, you may remember that we've been a part of the European Investment Bank, which has we've contributed uh, billions and we have investments through that bank or a share in those investments. We're not going to see any of that. No, nope, none of it. That is gone. We've signed it away. Uh, but we do get one thing back. Um, we get uh, half a trillion euros in potential uh, liabilities for guarantees from the EIB. That's right. We get nothing back ourselves except a half trillion euro liability for guarantees. Absolutely incredible, but there it is. We're on the hook and on the line for that. And you look at the economies and what's going on in the European Union, and it is cause for deep, deep concern. So that's the never ending purgatory, the financial costs. Now let's look at the uh, regulation and alignment. And here uh, there's just so many problems and issues. Um, but let's just take a few. I mean, we are obliged to align our rules. Uh, we're obliged to have a level playing field, uh, which could potentially restrict our free trade agreements with the rest of the world. So our, our idea in the Brexit party is that we open up uh, uh, the, the nation and the uh, country to free trade agreements uh, with other countries um, and we are able to do trade all over the world on as low tax, low duties um, policy as possible. That's going to be restricted by the European Union because we're obliged to have further alignment. Incredible, but there it is. And we're also obliged in addition to curb harmful tax practices. Harmful to whom? Well, quite clearly, that's going to be interpreted by the EU as harmful to them. So we're going to be prevented from having competitive tax practices, as we would like to see it, um, which help our business, help jobs, help our economy. If that conflicts or is seen by the EU as harmful, then potentially we could be stopped from doing it. Um, and we're also obliged to have full cooperation on regulation of fishing after the transition period. So after the, after the transition, we're obliged to continue to cooperate on the regulation, which basically means we're going to be forced into giving access to European Union giant fishing vessels to the detriment of our native fishing industry. And of course, this is diminishing and causing huge harm to our stocks of fish. This is one of the environmental measures where we in Britain could do a great deal better and a far better job of preserving and looking after our fish, fish stocks and our oceans than could any um, European Union official. Um, and those European officials are going to be immune from any kind of criminal law uh, in the UK or taxes in the UK. Incredible, but true.
that's where it is. Um, if we want to complain about that, well, forget it, because there is also a gagging order which prevents the Euro United Kingdom from disclosing information from the EU that the EU doesn't want disclosed. So if we want to complain about it or if our officials want to tell the British people what is going on or things that are going wrong, they're not allowed to do so. But don't worry, folks, the European Union can disclose anything it likes coming from the United Kingdom. There is no such restriction on the European Union. Incredible, but true. I've never seen a contract like that in, in my commercial experience, but this is a one way gagging order. Um, and the European Court of Justice will continue to have authority into free trade, trade deals and it will continue to sit above our own parliament um, in such, uh, such deals. Quite extraordinary. And, and the, the final really big thing, because this is not exclusive, there are many other problems with this, but um, our military will be constrained from taking action where it conflicts or impedes EU foreign policy. Yep, you heard it. We cannot send our soldiers into a conflict zone somewhere if it conflicts or impedes EU foreign policy. So you can imagine, we send troops all over the world. We have the uh, largest army in the European Union um, today. And when we leave, we will be bigger than any other national army in the European Union. Um, and it is a major part of our diplomacy and our ability to project our values to other places uh, in the world. And we will be prevented from doing that. And you can imagine that there are going to be plenty of times in the future when we don't entirely align with European Union policy. We want to have our independence, uh, the independence of our military, and we will not be able to do so. Not only that, it gets worse. We are actually obliged to have security uh, collaboration with the European Union, which effectively means we can't do our own thing, but we do have to support both financially and with soldiers, European Union activities, even if we disagree with them. So in short, none of this makes any sense at all. Um, and what we want is a clean break Brexit. We've always asked for that. It could be with a trade deal or it could be a no deal. But either way, we want a clean break Brexit. We want to get out. This means none of these payments. We won't have any of this alignment um, and we will be free to make the deals as we please. Um, and I believe that um, a European Union trade deal is absolutely inevitable because the EU wants to sell us goods. Um, and of course, we want to sell goods into the European Union. Uh, there's no question that we won't continue to do so even under a no deal. The majority of goods are still going to be traded between the countries. But it would be easier if we, uh, for the European Union and for the UK if we could have some kind of a deal. Um, so I, I believe that's inevitable. I believe it will happen even if we do have a no deal. I do not believe that the consequences of a no deal will actually cause any, anything like the damage that the Remainers have actually proposed and put forward. Um, and I think right now we're in a place where we've got two weeks to go. We need the certainty that this is going to bring to the nation. The biggest problem that we have today is the total lack of certainty for business to be able to get on and do their own thing. And this treaty, unfortunately, is just going to string that along for another two, three, four, five in the future number of years, because business will have no idea what the future is going to be and what's going to happen. So I'm really sorry, Boris, this is not a deal for me. It's not a deal for the British people. And um, I would like it to not be passed. And we move straight to a no deal Brexit on the 31st of October. And we come out of the EU with a clean break. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that clears up everything and look forward to speaking to you next time. Cheers. Bye.